Hello guys and welcome back to another oil field question and answer video. Now, since my first oil field video just hit over 100,000 views, which I never really expected um, because I really just <laughs> filmed that because uh, I was out of town and had nothing else to film. But since it is such a um, topic of interest and I get so many messages every day still asking more and more questions about the oil field, I wanted to talk to a highly coveted subject such as how much money can you actually expect to make while working in the oil or gas business. Now, on my last video, I made some, um, not errors, but snafus, just based on being, it worked a long time, and you know, every video is gonna have some typos and some, I said, um, per gallons instead of barrel, for instance, and guys, let it go, you know what I mean. And just so you guys know, I'm not making this up, here's my company ID. I work for a small company called Schlumberger. Now, I'm not gonna show you my employee ID number or the pertinent information, but now there should be no dispute and you can keep all your hating, stupid comments to yourself. So, a couple things I wanna go over, there's Obviously, every company is going to be different, and I'm not going to speak to one company specifically, but generally, the main companies follow this same price metric. Now, I'm going to be focusing mostly on entry-level jobs and what I know about entry-level positions, since those of us who are field engineers or above that require college degrees, I anticipate there's much fewer people wondering about those salaries. So, first salary, uh, I'll go over is going to be just on a frac crew, right? You'll start as an EOT usually, which start which stands for equipment operator trainee. Then there's EO1, EO2, EO3, and so on. Um, generally, as an EOT, you will be. I mean, each each position is is operating some piece of equipment, whether it be the uh, scorpion, which delivers the sand into the sand chiefs, or the chemicals, or any anything like that. Anyway, any part of a frat crew, there's no set position, but uh, until you get to like a line boss or something like that. But as an EOT, you can expect to take home about $5,000 a month. Uh, once you finally hit EO1, that's when it steps up to, I believe, around $17 an hour. Um, and then I think EO2 is maybe 19 and maybe EO3 is 20. Just again, depending on what company you go with, but uh, here's how the pay works. Usually you'll be on a 15 day on, six day off, or, or 14 day on, seven day off rotation. And for those 14 or 15 days, you'll most likely receive 13, or sorry, 14 to 15 hours of pay per day with overtime. As well as that, you usually will get a per diem unless you're staying in a man camp where they feed you. I know Slumberger's per diem is $15 a day, which isn't very good, but again, it comes with the territory. Now, once you progress out of EOT into the levels one, two, and three, you, uh, you do have additional bonuses available to you depending on production. The biggest companies that hire frac crews and guys with no experience are going to be Slumberger, Halliburton, Keen, which is K-E-E-N-E, -E -E, and um, Key Energy Services. There are obviously are others, but that's going to be on a frac crew, what you can generally expect to make. Now, as you go up through the ranks, you know, if you become a line boss, if you become Again, to become an EO3, just so you know, the, the requirements are to know every piece of equipment and be able to set up the uh, frat cat or the data van and set up a job in the data van. Not necessarily run through it, but you have to know how to set up a full job to reach that EO3. The next position is going to be a drilling crew. Um, Slumberger subsidiary Cameron is one of the largest, but there's obviously Cameron, there's going to be Halliburton, there's Slauson, um, and again, there's other oil drilling teams. Uh, yeah, I forget the other ones, but it's going to be a similar thing. However, usually on a drill floor hand is going to make about... Again, 18 to $21 an hour, depending on your level. A little bit different setup than the frat crew though. So the frat crew actually works a 12 hour shift, but gets paid 14 to 14 and a half. Um, 
a, a drilling hand or a drill hand will work, will actually live on location on the where the drill pad is. Um, a drill floor hand can progress up to a tool pusher, um, stuff like that. You guys can look up the hierarchy of it, but uh, an entry level position, like I said, They'll work 21 days on and then usually seven days off living on location. And if you're with a reputable, good company, if you're living on location, you should be getting paid 24 hours a day. They may have um, different pay, whether you're actually working or whether you're sleeping, but any reputable company will be paying you as a drill floor hand 24 hours a day. This is the one where they make the most money. It's also the hardest, very taxing. You may be at times where you may only get two to three hours of sleep and uh, it's not for everybody. <laughs> so really think about this one if that's where you're going to uh, think about applying. Third, and I talked about this a lot in the first video I posted, the kind of the easiest and I think the highest paying and the highest potential paying is going to be a C CDL operator. So of course, when you have a CDL, everything has to be moved, right? So there's everything from rig moves um, to delivering frac sand, uh, hauling crude oil, doing a hot shot, uh, all types of stuff like that. Generally, again, the reputable companies are going to compensate you with uh, either straight hourly pay or hourly pay plus bonuses. The Slumberger drive team makes between 14 and 17.50 an hour uh, plus a dollar 40 per loaded mile that can range so that can range anywhere from you know 350 to 600 a, a day depending on how how many miles you get 350 dollars to 600 dollars a day um the same thing the slumberjay drive team i know works on the same rotation as the frat crews which is 15 on 16 or 15 on six off and uh they're also eligible for safety bonus 500 dollars per month and uh, they get the same benefits as slumberjay employees i know halliburton cdl drivers who haul their sandboxes make about 21 to 23 an hour depending on your qualifications and endorsements I know they make straight uh, hourly with overtime. Slumberger, because they have the dollar forty a mile, they don't get paid um, overtime. The mileage bonus is in lieu of that. But Halliburton, I know, pays um, straight straight time or just only hourly with overtime. Same thing with Keen K E E N E. I think they make twenty three to twenty or sorry twenty one to twenty four an hour, depending again on your qualifications and endorsements. Same thing, no, um, it's just hourly pay with overtime and benefits. But again, these companies also uh, put you up in a man camp and should feed you three meals a day. I know Slumberger does pay for flights if you are from out of town. I know Halliburton and Keene does not pay for flights. Um, but, you know, that is something to consider. If you live close to where the oil field operates anyway, I would probably look at Keene or Halliburton. But if you don't, and obviously flying back and forth is going to be for you, you know, the Slumberger benefits is, uh, you know, having that flight available to you does save you a ton of money and, uh, and saves you from driving back and forth. The last thing is a swamper, <laughs> guys who operate vac trucks. And you see this kind of advertised all over the place because it's so hard to find. Basically what a swamper will do is uh, they, they are responsible for putting on a hazmat suit and getting inside of a tank battery and cleaning them out before they're transported. Absolutely disgusting job, filthy, horrible, horrible job. Um, not a horrible job, just a, um, just a very, very in intense, um, intense job where, you know, you're much more susceptible, susceptible to injury and disease, you know, um, those guys, I think they make about 16 to $18 an hour, if not less. And, uh, it's not worth it. It's not worth it. Some of the other stuff you could do with the CDL, like I said, is hot shot. Hot shot is those guys you see in the um, in the th one ton dually pickup trucks with a with a forty foot flatbed hauling pipes or hauling oil field equipment. 
those guys, um, when I was a hot shot, I made $27 an hour with overtime. Uh, those guys now, again, some pay by the load, some pay by the hour. You always want to try to find somebody who pays by the hour because uh, nothing works really fast or efficiently in oil fields. So you have to understand, like, you could sit somewhere literally anywhere from 1 to 20 hours waiting to get loaded or waiting for equipment to be repaired. So if you're paid by the hour, obviously that's all on your time. And if you're paid by the load, um, you know, you don't get, you, don't, you, don't, you get to pay the same whether that load takes 50 hours or whether it takes five. So anytime that they're going to pay by the hour, that's always a better situation. Um, so hot shot, hauling crude oil, crude oil again, a lot of companies pay a percentage of the load. Hauling crude oil, if you're walk, working for less than $500 a day, you're getting ripped off. Um, some pay by the hour. If you get paid by the hour, you want to expect at least $31 to $33 an hour. Uh, let's see, hauling production water, which is the water that goes into the waste tank battery. Once, uh, once, a, once a drill job is complete and you see the pump jacks going up and down, that is when uh, the, the, the well is producing. And what will happen is there is a process where the oil is obviously comes out of the ground, it's separated, part of it goes into a tank battery with the crude oil, the other part of it goes into the salt water or the production water tank battery. You'll see two different sets of truck one of them pulls up to the uh, crude oil batteries. That's obviously the crude oil haulers. The other trucks, they uh, pull up to the wastewater, wastewater, production water, salt water, it's all the same thing. And um, they'll load that water out of there. Those guys make 24 to 27, $26 an hour, depending again, what company you work for. Um, and again, all these jobs expect, you know, don't expect an eight hour day. Always expect to be, um, you know, 10 to 14 hours, depending on the company. I thought I had to sneeze. <laughs> other than that, there's a ton of other jobs ranging, you know, from 12 to $20 an hour, just depending what your skills are. I just want to talk a little bit more about what kind of money you can expect to make overall monthly, regardless of the position. You should not expect to make less than fifty-five hundred a month. If you're making any less than fifty-five hundred a month in the oil field, you're in the wrong job. Um, most of the guys I know who consistently show up and don't have excuses and don't call out uh, easily make eleven to fourteen thousand dollars a month with nothing more than a high school diploma. And then obviously it can go up from there depending on you know where you go. So that's it for this video. I just wanna give you guys some more information about money because I know when everybody looks into the oil field, they wanna know exactly how much money I'm gonna be making. One thing, as I said in the first video, is the oil field is never going to be forever. So if you do end up making ten to $14,000 a month, make sure that you're putting some of it away because obviously layoffs do happen and in fact I'm filming this at the end or mid August of 2018 uh, so around between Thanksgiving and Christmas and the new year uh, usually production slows down a little bit and uh, in fact the you know Wall Street guys and the the guys who predict the market are saying already that the price is going back down so there's just a little bit of information for you guys about money, um, you know, what you should expect. You're valuable to the oil, oil business, right? Every company is usually always hiring. Um, and of course, I just went over some of the main things. Obviously, there's mechanics, there's cooks, there's cleaners, there's office staff. You know, it's just think about it. Just use your brain, right? And each of those positions pays a little bit more, a little bit less. Um, welders as well is a, is a big one. It just the problem is there's a ton of welders, and if you see those guys driving around with the really cool trucks with all their welding gear on the back, that's awesome. It looks really cool, really cool job, but they're all independent contractors, and there's so many of them. It's, uh, I've heard it's hard to get into. I'm, I haven't dealt with it personally, but uh, like I said, that's it for money. Uh, I gave you guys pretty much all I know about the financials and what you can possibly make in the oil field. But of course, there's always 
uh, expanding information, new opportunities coming out, different pay structures. So this is current as of the day that I'm filming this, guys. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, you could uh, reach me on Instagram at jflatout. If not, I'll see you next video.